Musicians are catching on to the latest non-fungible token craze. Kings of Leon last week announced they would offer their latest album as NFTs. And our next guest partnered with Canadian rapper Tory Lanes and sold out NFTs made from three tracks from his upcoming album, Playboy. Joining us now to discuss is Bondly Finance CEO, Brandon Smith. Welcome, Brandon. Pleasure to be here. All right, great to have you. All right, Brandon. So, I'd like to know what is your role in the NFT world, and and what's your cut in terms of you know what are the artists getting, what are you getting, and and if you could explain. Yeah, sure. So I can do a little bit of background about Bonly real quick. So uh, we consider us to, ourselves to be the next generation of of e-commerce. Really, um, uh, where we're focused on things differently from PayPal is that we're entirely focused on digital assets. Uh, that's our key thing. So meanwhile, while we're building this platform, we're gaining customers, gaining gaining clients. We see this massive market form around us related to NFTs, and uh, we've been you know super advocates for this uh, for. I, even even from the middle of last year, right? We have our own uh, card game, our own uh, native uh, VIP program that that we use. That's all NFT oriented. So uh, when we saw this actually forming, uh, we we had the right technology at the right time. So it's been really awesome to see this all happen so quickly. So in terms of Tory Lanes, right? This is a uh, you know a group of artists that are the for are at the forefront of this. Um, so like I got Blau, uh, Grimes, Pelike. Tory Lanes, Kings of Leon. Uh, this is going to be the most destructive thing that's ever happened to social media, to music, to everything that we've seen probably in our lifetimes. Because for the first time ever, uh, there's the ability for a creator who's making a set of music or anything really to have a direct uh, relationship and transfer to their fans, especially their super fans. So we're really excited to see how this moves. Um, I think your question was in terms of the economics of how this works out. Um, this is different in every deal that we're making right now with all these artists. But the, the bottom line is that uh, we're able to uh, come in how with the fact that we have such a great community around us already. We have um, a great artist who are making awesome content, uh, both on the on the digital art side and on the music side. Right now, there's there's almost limitless uh, demand for what's being produced. But I'm wondering, you know, Part of the NFT uh, draw was to eliminate the middleman, but are, are you essentially the middleman? Oh, good question. Uh, so if we compare us to, uh, let's say, a label, I'd say the economics are, are completely, without going into too much detail of each deal we're doing, the economics are completely different. And what we think that we're doing that's very different from having a record label is that we are really, uh, we're not actually selling the music. So the, in the example with the Tory Lanez, um, the NFT that we sold is a, is a cool art piece. Uh, plus it has each of them have a track relating to his record, like you mentioned. Well, that's not what we're actually doing. What we're actually doing is we're creating a relationship. So right now, Tory Lanez knows every single holder for every one of these NFTs. And what does that mean, right? That means at any time he can drop his next single to them. He means he can drop um, another NFT that, that gives access to uh, something relating to his merch store. He can drop another NFT to them that says, hey, at this time, come to this place and well, I'm going to be doing a, a special concert just for you guys. So this is the kind of um, identity and relationship that these fans have now that I, I think you really you don't really get that from the full, full perspective. And in terms of being the middleman, this is really I'm, we feel like we're, we're more connecting to his fans than ever uh, by providing this type of um, this type of relationship. So um, we just make it easier for him to do that. So just to follow up on Christine's question. So this is, and this is not specifically about your business, but I think this touches on a larger issue, right? Because as Christine just said, the the whole point of NFTs, right? Is that like the artist can, can correct, connect directly to the fans and thus there is no one in the middle. And, and, you know, because that's what has screwed up kind of the whole current digital music economy, right? But I just kind of worry that because, you know, NFTs, they're actually not that easy to, to, to manage. And there's all these different platforms and, you know, artists aren't necessarily that tech savvy. So is there the danger of this kind of middleman economy coming out of this and basically turning NFTs into basically just a sort of fancier version of the situation that we have now? 
Yeah, really great question. So where we see Bonley in the, the equation right now is we are ushering in the first mover. So those who are willing to take advantage of this new market, we're here to usher them in. But ultimately, we're here to be the white, a white labeled solution for the major artists. So I'll, I'll tell you, out of the five uh, top Grammy winners that we've been talking to that are heading into this space, they, they don't want to go to a specific uh, uh, bargain bin um, <laughs> NFT marketplace to sell their wares. Believe me, that's not the that's not the goal. The goal is to make white labeled marketplaces that directly relate to their brand, that directly relate to their record label, everything relating to what they're doing. And that's exactly what Bonley is here for. <laughs> that's this is the technology we've created for every digital asset. So that's really what's going to be happening here. So we'll still have secondary markets. So the analogy would be something like eBay, right? Where we have people who buy the original things and maybe they can trade it on the white label platform too. But then if you're gonna to go to a higher liquidity, higher, um, higher uh, diversity of, of digital assets, that's when the marketplace aspect comes in. But right now uh, we have a, a few gatekeepers that I think are, are bringing people into the space um, that specialize in certain things. But um, I think this whole model is going to flip because because it's really going to be directed toward the creators themselves. Uh, Brandon, uh, good to have you on. But uh, a question I have about Torrent Lanes is uh, you said that there are three tracks that are going to go out with the NFTs. So who owns the, that revenue? Who owns that? Is it is it Bonley is going to collect it? Or does does the artist themselves own the, the, the tracks? Does it go to uh, their label? Who owns that those tracks? Yeah, so I, uh, in terms of the details of the of the split, I didn't want to go into detail here, um, because, but I will say, yes, there's a shared revenue model uh, of the initial sale. And then keep in mind, there is a commission shared with resale. Whom? Shared, oh, shared with whom? Is it just you and Bondly or is it Bondly and the artist or Bondly, the artist and the label? Who Who shares it? So every, every deal is different. Like, uh, yeah, just to be just to be clear, every deal, deal is different that we're doing right now. Um, Pelike, for example, we did an album with him, uh, eight tracks uh, that's currently in progress of being um, being distributed. So basically, um, he's an independent artist, right? He doesn't have a label. So the revenue share is directly with him, both on the sale and the resale. So what we would do in that case, in that scenario, is we sold a single NFT, and that NFT is basically your bookmark for that album like so Pelike at every time knows who you are and like we mentioned it's your identity right so over the next eight weeks we're going to be dropping new tracks from that album first listen is going to be an nft format to whoever's holding that album and in that case economics are simple right uh you can even like yeah it's very very visible very clear because everything's on the blockchain right it's not like a, a limited network we're doing right. this on ethereum and we'll be doing this on magic right when the artist, when the artist, when you play the the music for the consumer, if it's owned by the by the label, ultimately they're going to have to get paid somehow. And artists have been complaining nonstop. I, plenty of artists that I know can't stand Spotify. They can't stand iTunes. They hate the yeah. economics. That ever you know, ask Taylor Swift how that went. So, what exactly <laughs> are you doing that would be benefit that would actually benefit the artist? Number one, number two is. How are you going to get them more money for playing their tracks than if they went directly to one of these streaming services? Oh, I, a, yeah, it's very I, clear. I, I, uh, what, yeah, so it's what's very the, clear. Ultimately, what's the what's the, uh, the 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 breakdown? What would the breakdown be for a generic artist, so to speak? You know, everyone's different, obviously. But how, what would that look like? How about that? And you don't have to sit, name names or anything. Um, so I don't I don't think it makes sense for me to tell like, specific economics uh, related to the each of our deals because uh, then it would be it's it's going to be different every time. So, uh, but what I'd say is, is this right? Uh, this what we're selling here is an and not an or. What do I mean? What do I mean by that? Right? So and meaning this is an addition to all the other revenue streams that they have. For so for Tory Lanes, he's still so this what we really sold was a piece of digital merch, right? Which has its own economic model, which is not dependent on a number of streams. It has a sale model that's completely independent of him listing on on uh, Spotify, iTunes, all these other mechanisms. So people can still go listen to the album right now, right? But what's different is this is a moment that, uh, and a, a specific, in this case, a specific track 
uh, and um, uh, yeah, like, like a relationship that they can have with Tori that someone who just listens for free on Spotify can't have. So that's yeah. that's really the difference. And I, and as you mentioned, like I can say directly, like the streaming uh, economics for the current platforms are awful. Like I can at least tell you. But this is way better trying to sell NFTs and the revenue, the direct revenue, you can ask the artists themselves, like Tori, Pelike, uh, any of them who've been doing it so far. The revenue is so much better than the existing platforms. Pelike is a uh, has four, over four million subs on YouTube and he he constantly makes um, videos that have over a million uh, hits or a million plays. Right. And the, the actual earnings are terrible. Right. Compared to the amount of traffic and eyeballs he has versus just selling 100 or 200 NFTs. It's it's a completely right. different thing. 